Hello, Crustacean Nation. Today, as you can see, I am on the road, which means road trip. Today is road trip up to Fayetteville, North Carolina. I'm coming up from Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, where I'm currently on vacation with my family. Uh, today is a first for me. I've never been to the new uh, new Segra Stadium there in Fayetteville. Um, last year, this team was known as the Bowie's Creek Astros, and they played at Campbell University. Um, they got a new stadium this year, as I said, and a new identity. They are known as the Woodpeckers now. Uh, I'm going to see them take on the Salem Red Sox. Uh, should be pretty interesting. I know it's two road trips in a row where I've seen a Red Sox team. Uh, but hopefully, I'll keep up my good luck and I'll get to see them lose. Uh, sorry for any uh, any vibration or any any loud sounds here. As you can see, I am on the road in my car. Um, hopefully, it'll be a good day. Okay, we are here at the Fayetteville Transportation Museum. Uh, this used to be the uh, Cape Fear and Yadkin Valley Railroad Depot. It was built in 1890. Uh, this is a baseball video, so what we're here for is the baseball display and Babe Ruth. So let's head inside. Okay, as you can see, I've made it here to the museum and I'm standing in their baseball exhibit. Um, you see some of the former teams they've had here in Fayetteville, the Crocs, the Generals, and the Swamp Dogs. You see they've got some old bats here. Hanging up some baseballs. What I'm wanting to find, and here's some, some child's baseball stuff. Oh man, they got some old baseball rules book. Some Highlanders jersey. Looks like they were a Cleveland Indians affiliate from the 20s. And a police jersey. Fayetteville Police Young Men's Baseball Team. This is pretty cool. And here it is. Babe Ruth. In Babe Ruth in Fayetteville. Baltimore Orioles came to Fayetteville in 1914 for spring training on March 7th while playing in the intra-squad exhibition, exhibition game at Cape Fear Fairgrounds. Rookie George Herman Ruth hit his first home run in professional baseball. It was Ruth's fifth day as a professional, his first game, and his second time at bat. While in Fayetteville, he acquired the nickname Babe. Before leaving Fayetteville, Jack Dunn, the owner and manager of the Orioles, announced the list of players he intended to keep for the regular season, and Babe Ruth was one of them. He hits like a fiend and seems to be at home in any position, even though he's left-handed, was Jack Dunn speaking about Babe in 1914. In 1935, Babe Ruth and Boston Braves played an exhibition game against North Carolina State College in Fayetteville at Highland Ballpark. After the game, the Braves went to Prince Charles Hotel on Hay Street where Babe Ruth was kept busy signing autographs. A citywide celebration was held in 1952 for the unveiling of the Babe Ruth State Historic Marker on the site where he hit his first professional home run in 1914. That is pretty awesome. You can see up here they got a Babe Ruth starting lineup figure. Oh, and you see that autograph right there? That is Babe Ruth. This is Babe Ruth autographed this ball at Prince Charles Hotel while visiting Fayetteville in 1935. That's pretty amazing. Well, I've got just a few minutes left here at the uh, museum before they close. So I'm going to stop filming and explore a little bit. Cool, but it's about four o'clock and the museum is closing and I'm kind of hungry. I didn't get much lunch. 
and I need some gas in the uh, in the old stallion there. Uh, so I'm gonna go find some gas and some, throw some groceries down my throat. Well, I just had a burger and fries, very delicious burger and fries here at the Husk Hardware House Restaurant and Brewing Company. Uh, it's located not far from the stadium. I highly recommend it if you, when you come to a game here in Fayetteville. Uh, the, the atmosphere was really cool. Uh, the, the pricing, you know, is about what you'd expect, in, like a pub. Um, the staff was very friendly. They were, they were very fast. They came around and, you know, enough to where you didn't need anything, but not so much as to be obtrusive, which is a very hard balance to get. You know, most places you go, they're either one or the other. Either you're dying of thirst or they're interrupting you every two seconds. Not this place. This place is awesome. Highly recommend that you go whenever you come to a game. You know, you can see the street here. You know, it's pretty cool. Old part of town vibe. Uh, the police station's not far away, so it's a very safe part of town. Uh, according to one of the guys I talked to here, they actually built the police station there because they knew they were going to be uh, kind of rejuvenating this part of town and they wanted the police presence here to help that and they've apparently done a very good job. And uh, now I'm going to walk to the stadium. In the stadium just in time to see an Amtrak coming by. Going into the station. I was going to come to the to the ballpark today on an Amtrak, but the timing just didn't work out with the return trip. It would have put me getting back back to Myrtle Beach at around uh, 6 a.m. and it's only a two and a half hour drive. So. And on the other side of the stadium, they have a freight line. See two <laughs> CSX engines coming in here. Engineer waving at everybody. If you love baseball, you love trains like I do, this place is a dream. Okay, and now we'll start our tour of the stadium. I hope you can hear me over the PA announcer who's doing a fantastic job of introducing the Salem Red Sox while getting in subtle jabs at them. Very minor league, very awesome. Uh, here we have Bagwell's Burgers. You can see we are on the first base side of the field here. Um, you can see the area that I just, what just left. They got a little play area up top there, top of the steps. Uh, some other concessions. Uh, this, uh, this is a very cool ballpark, I've got to say. If you love baseball and you love trains, you gotta come here. There's tracks on both sides of the field. And on one side, it's actually an Amtrak station. And on the other side, it's freight, and from what I hear, also troop transports when, the, when Fort Bragg is needing to move some things, move troops around and other things. Uh, see up there? The uh, Corona Party Deck. That is up above the lower seats, of course, hence the deck, party deck. Um, here we have the Bird's Nest Team Store, which is pretty awesome. They've got some really cool stuff in there. You can see it's a very nice team store. Um, of course, just like every other stadium, they have little little carts out where you can buy beverages, both adult and otherwise. Uh, things like hot dogs and pretzels. And of course, they have their wheel to spin, tickets, and guest services. They have Sergeant Stubby's Hot Dogs, which is, I think that's a cool name considering the largest military base in the world here with 50,000 soldiers stationed there. But, uh, 
course, they also have L to, uh, men's and women's bathrooms, a family bathroom, which is pretty cool. You don't see a lot of family bathrooms in the stadiums. Uh, and one of the things that I think is very cool is the uh, reserved picnic areas here. They have a couch and actual cushioned seats. That is awesome. You usually don't get that level of comfort at a ball game unless you get in the suite. And here we have Foothills Brewery uh, Home Plate Bar. If a lot of places have bars out in the right and left field, but no, they went all out and they put it right behind Home Plate. So you can sit and enjoy your beverage and still watch the game from an excellent view. Uh, of course, they have an ATM machine, blah, blah, blah. They have 82nd and Pay Grill. Highland Brewing Company. They have lots of adult beverages here. Um, they have an NBA game on that TV. It's kind of dark. I don't know if you can see that. But you know what NBA stands for? Not basketball anymore. Uh, MLB Tonight on this TV. That's pretty cool. Um, more restrooms. Um, this is a wraparound stadium as far as the seating goes. There are seats all the way around the stadium. Uh, we have Bowley's Barbecue, I believe is how you say that. It's always good to have a barbecue restaurant in the stadium. <laughs> The city of Fable App is the field looks amazing. With city services available on iPhones and Android devices. I, you, know, you come to a lot of stadiums. And usually at this point in the season, the field looks rough, but this looks like opening day grass. That's pretty nice. And over here, we have the Amtrak station. I saw it a little bit earlier when I first got here. There was an Amtrak train pulling up and stopping and letting people off and you know whatnot. And, um, that's pretty awesome. Like I said, if you love baseball and you love trains, you got to come to this stadium. It is absolutely amazing. Um, you see, they have a very nice, very large scoreboard out in left field. They have you know, tables with seats around them. Um, really looks like there's not a bad seat in the house here. Um, you can see over here coming up is the uh, play area for the kids, which is situated right in the right where the tracks split. So if your kids love trains, take them there. They can play there and watch trains. Pretty awesome. And out here you can see some guys tossing a ball back and forth. I believe that's the Red Sox. So they suck. Forget about them. And here you can see the bullpens just over the left field wall. Fans, it's time for tonight's banquet bash. Not anyone tonight's out in the bullpen yet. Is the Woodpeckers because they have not started the when game here. Name, please head over to here you can start to see Jacob the general Myers admission area. Trophy. Here we go. And here we have their mascot. Nine, Aiden, hey, hey, hey. Bolger. How's it going? Go Woodpeckers. The Red Sox suck. Number 10, <laughs> Braden Comp. Oh, mascots are always a good time. And there's the number one kid zone Carson play Lee area. Robert. They got a got a diamond on the ground there. That's pretty cool. We got a bounce house and all that fun stuff. Monkey bars. Number two, um, Emmett Flowers. Out, you know they do have restrooms out here in the outfield. A lot of stadiums you go to, they for some stupid reason don't number they can put them out there. Evan Reed.
Number 20, Jake from the Miller. outfield looking in towards home plate. And there you can see, you can see the Y, that's W-Y-E, where the, where the trains come in and change direction. Another thing I think is really cool that they have here is rocking chairs. Number 24, Colt Hall. You don't see very many stadiums that have rocking chairs. That is that's Number cool. Zero, Nathan Carter. Got three rows of rocking chairs, but probably the coolest thing in the entire stadium is this right here. Number seven, Robert McPherson. Number 42. Yeah, this weekend's Fourth of July Anderson. weekend. And if it wasn't for our our military, our, our citizens who are willing to take up arms and put their lives in danger, we wouldn't have these freedoms. We wouldn't have the baseball. So thank you. And I hear a train. I don't see one. This will be the third one while I've been here. I've only been here about 30 minutes. If I if we see it. Oh yeah, here it comes. Oh, it's a... Two more CSX. Wave to the engineers. Like I said, if you love baseball and you love trains, you got to come to this stadium. The teams are now out on the field early. It's getting closer to game time. And as you can see here, they have a bar out in right field, which is called uh, Healy's. And that brings us around to where I started, and that concludes the tour. Man on first base, coming to the plate for the Red Sox. The catcher, number 20, Nick Shortino. I hate this freaking song. It follows me everywhere. Every freaking stadium. I hate it. Come on, guys. Somebody update your stuff. And here we, here we have a train going by, hauling some stuff either to or from Bragg. See some Humvees. And it starts to rain in the bottom of the seventh. It scores eleven to one in the seventh. I don't see why they don't just call it. Game's been over for a few innings anyway. Night Woodpeckers just didn't have it.
that's all for this road trip another ballpark in the books this has been a dirty bells production if you like this video don't forget to like share and subscribe and when you subscribe hit that uh, notification cowbell so you'll be notified the next time the video is uploaded uh, you can follow me on Twitter at Conrad's Cowbells we have a Facebook group on Facebook of the same name I look forward to seeing you there and don't forget to go over and check out Dirty Balls podcast on on YouTube and also you can follow those guys on Twitter at Dirty Balls pod and as always abide by the claw